going to drop down a little bit here. I'm going to drive or fly or do something over here by the trees, along the trees. See if I get any, uh, there's not really too many colorful trees right here, so. So I know a lot of people when they uh, start off flying, they get all excited about flying and some of the things they want to do. Uh, and I would think going out and seeing the scenery, like seeing the trees, would be uh, one of the things that they really uh, look forward to. Smoke coming out of this trash can. Smell it over here. Reminds me years ago when I lived over in the Pacific, we used to burn our trash all the time. I remember going in the house and smelling the trash burning. I burned some trash over here too, and uh, I'd always make sure that the smoke was blowing towards my mother in law's place so she would smell the smoke. And I'd hear about it. All right, we're going to gain a little altitude and uh, fly over these trees and get over to the other side of the this main road out here. And uh, to get over there, there's a a lot of trees. So we'll get altitude and see if we can get up and over there. Break it up. There's a 92 feet above the ground, but uh, that doesn't seem right. I've got a little more than that. Maybe these sunglasses make things seem a little different. You guys ever wear Polaroid sunglasses while you're flying and does it seem like the the distance is different or it's different to fly? They're out here cutting a soybean about 22 miles an hour, 614 feet. Getting a little bouncy out here. 607, 25 miles, 620. And that's the same as the time, 620. So it's 620 p.m. That's 640. Uh, beautiful evening. Somebody asked me the other day to talk about crosswind takeoffs. And why do I take off and crosswind takeoffs? Well, I don't like to. It doesn't bother me. It's no big deal anymore. But uh, if you're going down a runway that's east and west, if you got a wind coming across, you know, you're going to have to either learn how to take off into it or do the best you can to get up. Uh, some people think that you probably shouldn't even be flying or find another spot. I'd like to uh, have an east-west, north-south, and, and all sorts of different angles, uh, but uh, that option's not always open. Uh, having a big, huge field like the one I took off just a while ago uh, is really good. Uh, you got trees on the right and left and um, trees up front, but it's open. You get a little rotor coming over 
But uh, for the most part, you can set up uh, where you want. There is kind of uh, some areas you got to be careful you don't hit holes and stuff, so you can't uh, always take off exactly where you want, but pretty much uh, close enough. So uh, you know that the, if the wind's coming from the left side, that your wing, your uh, if back behind you to the right, the wing, the right side is going to come up, and your left side's going to dip. So, and once you get a little bit of speed, you get a little bit of control of it, and you can adjust for that wing. And sometimes, if it's a really good wind and it's a good crosswind. You're going to get a, a weak tip. It's going to drag. And if it's grass out on the field, you're going to end up taking grass out of the tip of your wing. Been flying for about uh, 27, 28 minutes. Flying around, uh, having flown at a, probably a couple months from out of here. And uh, seems like a lot of Amish are starting to just pop up everywhere. Seeing more horses and buggies. And uh, you have the window open, you can hear them going down the road. And their horses clicking clock down the road, 30 miles an hour. Turned into the wind. About 25 now. Talking about flying. When you first start flying and you're, you're drilling in your head, make sure that you have an out just in case anything happens. So you're you're always looking and looking and looking and make sure you have an out. And after a while, when you fly in a certain area, many times, you, you almost know where those outs are. You're in an area where the outs are, or you'll fly in the area where their outs are. But uh, you'll also uh, understand what your glide rate is and know that, you know, you'll, be, you'll know that some outs are that are a little bit further than you thought. Because when you first start, you are looking almost, almost underneath you to make sure that you have an out and get I think it almost has to be underneath you, but uh, once you learn your glide ratio and how far you can go, you can kind of look out a little bit, and then also with the wind, if you know you're going into the wind, you know that you can turn around and go, or you can go into the wind, if you're going into the wind, if you're going into the wind, and you know that you just pass an out, you know that you can turn around and use that out because you're going to have that wind behind you pushing you. So you get a little bit more comfortable uh, with your outs, and so flying becomes comfortable. And instead of going up and being worried the whole flight, you know that you, know, you have an out. Going about 29 miles an hour, about 500 feet in the air, a little under 500.
like a minute or an hour and two minutes, we are on the ground. 